special presentation of the Commonwealth Games from Birmingham. I am here at the Alexander Stadium, which is the athletic stadium uh, during these games. And the buzz inside the stadium is unmistakable. Not for nothing is athletics called the mother of all sports. There are about 30,000 people right now inside the stadium. A little later in the evening, two of our Indian athletes, um, uh, Anis, Yaya Anis and Sri Shankar Murli will be seen in action in uh, the discipline of uh, high jump. In the discipline of long jump, I'm sorry. But yesterday in the high jump finals, our athlete Sri Shankar Murli, uh, our athlete Tejashwin Shankar won India a historic bronze medal. It was the first time that India claimed a medal at, at the Commonwealth Games in the discipline of high jump. Earlier today, we had the opportunity of uh, speaking to Tejashwin Shankar, the, uh, uh, histo the history maker, and his road to the podium that has been littered with difficulties. Listen in. It's a historic medal for India at the Commonwealth Games. We have Tejaswin Shankar with us who has won a bronze medal for us in high jump. But it wasn't easy. The journey wasn't easy at all. When the opening ceremony was happening, you were sitting at home. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I mean, the journey is not easy. I mean, it hasn't been easy for me. And I feel like, I mean, if it would have been easy, then it probably wouldn't have been as much exciting as it is now. And the feeling wouldn't have been as... Uh, you know, like prevalent as it is now. So this medal means so much more to me considering the fact that, you know, I was able to get here a few days ago and make the most of that opportunity and <clears throat> get a medal for the country. So I'm just extremely excited and happy to let this feeling sink in. And you haven't taken off the medal since you no, won it? Uh, yeah, not at all. I mean, like this is my second major international medal. I mean, if you count the SAF Games, SAF Games medal as an international medal, yeah, but this is actually my first big international medal. I'm ex extremely happy to you know just be I mean to be honest with you I just don't have words so I don't want to say something and regret later so I'll just leave that to when I have words about this. They just mean the way to Commonwealth Games has been through court you had to fight a court battle to be here tell us a little bit about that period when you could not convince the Athletics Federation of your ability to get a medal. It's it's definitely been a journey so you know, initially for, you know, not being able to get in the squad and then finally being able to get in the squad and get an opportunity. There were so many twists and turns and, you know, it's just like a fairy tale ending, so to say, to finally be able to, you know, go back home with a medal. And like I said, uh, you know, like when you're home, back home, you know, it's about me and you and all that sort of thing. But once you're out of the country, it's about the country and you want to bring back something for the country. If you go out there, you don't just want to go there to, you know, participate. So my only goal was, yes, Previous Commonwealth Games, I had that opportunity to compete in front of a major crowd at Gold Coast and I finished sixth there. So I knew that, okay, next Commonwealth Games, I need to improve my position and at the same time, like, be in contention for the medals. And I had that experience. I had competed in the collegiate circuit for the last five years. So I had that experience. I had that competition practice that I needed. And finally, for everything to unfold the way it did, I'm just grateful that it happened the way it did. I'll ask you about the collegiate circuit, but first thing, the big headline at home is that apparently you, you were practicing with three dogs at the stadium even after the team was here. Well, so <clears throat> I really didn't know if I was going or not until, you know, like I think it was the Friday before last week. So uh, for me, it was important to stay in shape and staying in shape means, you know, at any cost and you want to do anything possible to stay in shape. So we'd usually go around to Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi. We'd usually go around, uh, you know, 2.33 p.m. And that's when, you know, you don't have anybody come in. And we, don't, we usually didn't go in the evening because then it gets really crowded. So we wanted to go around noon. But at that time, the only spectators you have are stray dogs. So for me, I mean, I just... So for me, from three stray dogs to 30,000 spectators in Birmingham, I think that's a big journey that I've tell accomplished us, in the last Tell us about the moment, you know, picking up the medal in front of a packed crowd. It was phenomenal. I think especially, you know, after I made that 222 jump and then I saw that the Bohemian guy, he was not able to, uh, you know, complete his third attempt. And I, yeah. at that point, I couldn't finished. Couldn't go to 225. He couldn't go to 225. And at that point, I knew that I'd secured the bronze medal. I had this feeling of, you know, like I really didn't know how to feel because I had never been in this position. 
and I could see the Indian coaches and some of the other athletes, you know, they were waving the Indian flag and all that sort of thing. But I just didn't know how to react at that moment because I'd never been in this situation. So I I wanted to go there, but at the same, same time, I wanted to just stay there and be like, okay, well, what, what am I supposed to do next? So I, I was caught in that feeling. But as it started sinking in, I just, you know, embraced the feeling and I was just so happy to be, you know, in a position where I could contribute to Ashwin, the Ashwin, you are sounding very grounded, very sorted. Tejaswain, uh, what I wanted to ask you is that, is there a feeling of vindication because of what you've gone through? Uh, not at all. So, like I said, I mean, like, ultimately, everybody's goal is to, you know, like, give the best for the country. And yes, there might be different methods, different ways. I used a different way to, you know, approach and, like, try to lobby my selection into the team or somebody might have another way of doing that. But I felt like I don't have any regrets. I know that what I did was right. And I know that that's the reason I'm in the team. And to be finally given the opportunity, you know, like a lot of times we just point fingers and, you know, we are caught up in vindication and all that sort of thing. But ultimately, everybody's goal is to win a medal. And but, that's what everybody came together and did at the end. And I'm grateful for but that. But would you not say that you're a product not of the system, but despite the system? I, I really don't know if that's helping the situation. As long as we have a medal, I think that's what matters. And Yes, a lot of things can change, a lot of things need to change, but I feel like today is a day not to talk about those things, but today is a day to celebrate the medal for the country. And maybe next time we can talk about these issues and maybe we can raise those questions. Okay, one final question. The road ahead for you now. Um, you've, you, have you, as you mentioned that the American collegiate system has helped you a lot to get here, to get to where you are today, but the next step for you. So um, now that I'm done with my collegiate career, now that I'm done with my education, um, it's important for me to get it. So the sports changed a little bit. I don't know if you're aware or not, but now it's not about how high you can jump, but it's more about where you can jump and against who you can jump. So it's more of a ranking system than just like pure height in the high jump or like how fast you can run. So now I need to compete in some meets in Europe and compete in other competitions where I can get more ranking points. So that'll be my goal to compete in higher ranked meets so I can get entry into bigger meets like the World Championships and Olympic Games and make the most of that opportunity. So next steps for me would be to uh, compete in not the collegiate meets but higher ranked meets, compete in better meets and just um, you know perform well in those meets. And how much does this uh, victory help you? to get those ranking points and get to major athletics. So 100%. Games. After the Olympic Games and the World Championships, the Commonwealth Games and all these uh, continental games have a lot of significance and they give you a lot of bonus points on top of your placing points. So yes, this third place third place finish in Birmingham is going to really help me with uh, boosting my ranking in the high jump. So if I can get a couple more meets like this within the next year and a half, which will happen, I'll have the Asian Games in front of me and we'll have the Asian Championships next year. So those competitions will really prove to, uh, you know, be, be of something that will help me with my ranking points. And I feel like I can use those to use that as leverage to compete at the World Championship. And Thank you very much for talking to us. Enjoy the moment and jump higher. Thank you so much. Well, that was our high jumper Tejaswin Shankar who won a historic bronze medal for India. We are right now at the Alexander Stadium and you can probably hear the buzz and the excitement inside. A little while from now, our long jumpers will be seen in action. Sri Shankar Murli and Anis Yahya. But before that, let me tell you that uh, this Commonwealth Games has been a Games of many firsts. Our uh, squash team also won a medal for the first time and that coming from veteran Saurav Ghoshal, listening to him. So another historic medal for India through squash coming in from Saurav Ghoshal. Saurav, moment of truth for you, having played the sport for so long, a bronze medal here at the Commonwealth Games. For sure, you know, it's, um, I don't know how to explain it in words. Uh, it's probably the toughest match I have played mentally in my entire career uh, with the, you know, the context of it all, obviously with it being a bronze medal playoff and, you know, a possible historic first medal for India, playing James Wilstrop, who is a legend of the sport, but also someone who I've learned from so much and trained with so much. Um, everything put together was just very hard. And I mean, I'm really, really proud of the performance that I put in yesterday because it needed that sort of performance to beat someone of the quality of James and um, I'm just really happy that I could pull it out and yeah you know better late than never I've been working very hard for this medal 
um, I came here, you know, wanting to win gold. I did everything. Unfortunately, uh, Paul Call, the eventual gold medalist, was very, very good in the semis, and I couldn't get through him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess this is the next best uh, possibility. So, so I hope this does uh, a lot for for Indian squash and and takes it further along the the road in terms of uh, you know making it. Uh, a big big sport in India. Would you say it was more a mental sport that you played than you know physically playing against Wilstra? I think it's it's a bit sequential. I think uh, I think mentally I had to be really really up for it. It was very very difficult. Uh, the time preceding the match, it was it was very very hard to kind of put myself in the right frame of mind. Uh, what I tried to basically shut everything out and focus on exactly what, what kind I need of talks to do. Did you have with yourself? I was literally just, you know, telling myself point by point what I needed to do in terms of, you know, where I needed to put the ball, uh, what responses I needed to do from what he was going to throw at me, uh, you know, playing out different situations in my mind. After that, of course, the physicality is is important as well. I mean, James is, if not the most skillful player ever, he's he's up there with the very best, and and I knew that, you know, there were going to be rallies which were going to hurt. Uh, but I needed to use my physicality to, to get through them as much as possible and and thankfully for the most part I managed to do that and, and I think that's why I won. Sort of biggest medal for you? Yeah, I think it would probably be, you know, shading the Asian Games team gold. I think that is a very, very special day for me as well because uh, it's the team that has kind of done it and uh, it means a lot for me. But I think uh, this Commonwealth Games singles medal is, is a huge thing for uh, for me personally and for Indian sport and um, I mean Rithwik for example messaged me yesterday you know telling me that um, 15 years back no one would have even dreamt that someone from India would win a singles medal and I just replied back to him saying you know you started it so I'm really glad that I carried through with it and we're here today so what next <laughs> what next uh, mixed doubles event next uh, with a with Deepika Hopefully, you know, that's what, you know, we, we work for and uh, that's what we aim for. Uh, but again, it's one day at a time. Um, we want to focus on playing the way we want to play and execute the way we want to. And hopefully we will do that, play well and win. Saurav, I'm really sorry we missed the moment we were because we were at judo. But I heard that you were very, very emotional after winning the medal. Yeah, I guess it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, playing James on that stage. Um, when the draw came out, I actually was hoping that we would meet each other in the final. That would be my <laughs> dream final. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen for the both of us. Uh, but, you know, to play him, uh, to beat him on such an occasion, uh, to play the way I played, and then, of course, you know, to, to win the, you know, the elusive medal mm -hmm. uh, for, for India, for myself, um, in an arena which is brilliant like this, in an environment like this, yeah, it was overwhelming and it, it, it was definitely one of the most special days of my life. I wish you all the best for the future ahead, road, road ahead and uh, hope you and the Pika go for a gold. Thank you, hopefully. Saurav is gunning for a gold medal in the mixed doubles with Dipika Palikal, who is also his sister-in-law and super mum. Dipika is back in the circuit after giving birth to her twins. They are nine months old and she's traveling with them during the Commonwealth Games. Listen to the super mom, Deepika Palikal. I'm joined by squash ace Deepika Palikal. Uh, Deepika, we just saw you win here. It isn't easy to win at the Commonwealth stage. Any game that you play, you played Wales, it's difficult. Tell us who's been your toughest opponent so far. And in this draw, who do you see as your toughest opponent going all the way to go? See, I think uh, doubles is a game that anyone can beat anyone on a given day. Every team is tough. And especially with the, uh, the format that is in this year, I think it's a knockout stage rather than a round robin. So every match uh, depends on how you play on that day. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we're seeded one, so we obviously have the upper hand, but uh, every match is going to be difficult. Like today, you know, I don't think the scoreline says that it was a hard match, but mentally for me, it was definitely a hard match. It was my first match in the glass court after four years and it was, it's obviously playing at the biggest stage. You're obviously very nervous. So I just tried to shake off whatever, you know, I was thinking and trying to just get back into the routine and, you know, hopefully we can come out tomorrow as well and do well. Do keep tuning in to all our coverage, all the updates that we will keep sending you from here in Birmingham at the Athletic Stadium. There's a huge buzz right now. 
everyone's waiting for the two Indian boys to come up and strike gold. With that, a wrap on the show. Thanks for watching. Welcome to another side of Britain. A side where we discover new flavours on every street corner. Where we take good times to new heights. And where ways to get around are limited only by our sense of adventure. In 2022, come and join us for an unmissable year of celebration. So get ready to explore different every day.